Hi folks, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection Model Review, Issue 55, The Vulcan Dekir Class. A bit of a crumple box, but hopefully everything inside is fine. So, here we have it, up to 55. I know I keep saying that now in every video at the moment, but um, yeah, looking forward to this Vulcan ship, I must say. So, let's quit the jibber-jabber, and let's get straight into it. Ah. I've had this for a couple of days, been dying to get into it. Was just waiting for the correct time. Here we have a bit of a crumble. Oh, that wasn't me. Uh, but everything looks pretty sound in here. Everything else is pretty rigid. So we'll, we'll soon see. But uh, yeah, can't wait to get my hands on you. But let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? Nice graphic actually on her at the moment. Uh, Dekir type launch, 22nd century, length 600 meters, crew 147. Doesn't seem like a massive crew, to be honest with you. Nice back graphic there. So let's see what goodies we have inside. So here we have the Dekir type. Um, let's open her up here and have a look. Let me just center this as best as I can. Uh, there we go. Okay, so section one, Dekir type. Section two, designing the Dekir, uh, beginning the Vulcan Reformation and on-screen appearances. So this sits very similar to the Sir class Vulcan ship that we already have. Um, Vulcan High Command, class combat cruiser, top speed warp seven, weaponry, uh, particle beam emitters, photonic torpedoes, and Captain Varus and Maroc. Mm. Some nice close-ups here as well. Just that, that does look, that just looks very nice, doesn't it? That uh, profile shot. So, ooh, that's a nice shot, isn't it? So we have our warp ring, impulse drive. Um, the Kier type ships feature large um, annular warp nacelle, similar to other Vulcan ships. But on these vessels, the nacelles could pivot between being fully horizontal and being fully vertical. They also carry an auxiliary craft duct inside the ring itself, which is in here. So. This whole ring can flip on itself, so it's just super streamlined, which is really nice. Uh, the crew of the Enterprise uh, came across several Dekir type vessels in the 2150s, including the Dekir, the Talkir, and the Salea. Uh, the official class name of these vessels were never identified, hence, they have been referenced after the Dekir, the first ship of the type to be encountered by Enterprise. Okay. All about superior Vulcan technology as well, you know. Ooh, a look-see here. The letter that subscribers have gotten. It's just nestled inside the magazine. So I have a video on this. This is about a price increase. Uh, check out the video before this one. I'll probably link it in the doobly-doo somewhere here or here or here or somewhere here. But uh, such a tiny piece of letter. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Needs must if we want the collection to continue, I'd say. Anyway, uh, what do we have here? Despite Vulcan uh, reputations for pacifism, the Dekir type vessels were heavily armed with both photonic and particle weapons. In 2154, several Dekir ships in orbit of Vulcan were ordered by Administrator Velas to fire on the Takarath Sanctuary, where a group of dissidents were or sorry, we're a group of distance known as the Cyrenites were hiding out. And here is one in mid-destruction. Nice screen grab there, actually. Very, very cool. Very cool. And here we have a fleet of Vulcan ships. That was a nice, uh, nice shot. But I'm going to keep a lot of the goodies to yourself, friends. You can discover these and enjoy reading the magazines, too. Um, here we have our warp ring, uh, aft particle beam emitter. Okay. I don't see where that is. It's nestled probably inside. Ventral beam, main bridge. This has to be the scout craft. Impulse engines. Um, ba -da 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 -da. Okay. It was possible that the Dekir was a Memora class vessel, but as this class was never formally identified, this is only speculation. Mm, interesting. The Dekir type Talkir was disabled by Tholian ships in 2152 after picking up a time travel pod from the 31st century that Enterprise had discovered. The Talkir had to be towed back home 
to the planet by Vulcan Transports. Yeah, it was very, very damaged, wasn't it? Ooh, designing. It just looks so cool like that. That looks freaking awesome. I love that. There's the support craft once it uh, docks, um, once it disengages from the main mother craft as well. So that's really cool. So who do we have here? Eves, yeah. Eves produced several color drawings uh, showing different shapes of the Dakir. Originally named the Defahal, maybe, I don't know. Uh, would have been a circular engine, circular warp engine in place uh, and with, what is this? I can't even read now. Would have with it the circular warp engine in place and with and without the small rescue crafts. Oh, okay, with and without, blah, blah, blah. I had a brain fart there, I do apologize. Maybe I should edit that out. <laughs> There's the support craft, really cool. I thought these disengaged and this dropped down or something like that, but uh, I was wrong. So here we have the motions, docks, swings around, uh, really cool. Warp ring rotates into flight position and then the ship is ready for travel. Survey ship is docked. Okay, so a survey ship support ship. E's first design for small rescue ship. That was docked in the center of the ring at the back of the ship. He describes it as being like a football <laughs> that had to be cut open uh, like a sandal. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Vulcan Reformation. Ooh. So what do we have here? The Vulcans of Archer's era were designed to be antagonistic. Uh, who would change as the series progressed. Yeah, they were fairly douchey, weren't they? Big write-up on, actually, this. And here we have screenshot. Uh, first appearance, Shockwave Part 2. Designed by John Eves. TV appearances, Star Trek Enterprise. The Dakir Vessus Leia was named after a sacred mountain Vulcan. Cirque. The founder of the modern uh, Vulcan civilization was said to have died on Mount Silea uh, before the final battle between his followers and those who marched beneath the raptor's wings. Ah, hint, hint. The enemy apparently left Vulcan to become the Romulans. Oh my, look what we have next. Saber class, Alex Yeager's beauty. Perfect, good well, guys, and um, that concludes the magazine. So let's have a look at this model, shall we? Let's cut out on the back graphic. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. Let's open her up. And I just, as I'm opening up this, I'd like to thank everyone who's entered the competition in the last Star Trek Starships video to win a Nausicaan Raider. That's still open till the end of the month. So check out my previous review. I will link it in the doobly-doo somewhere here. And um, yeah, may the lucky person enjoy that ship. Ooh, everything seems fine on the model. Pop up the base. How about the stand? Because I'm all about that base. Just ignore me, I'm sorry. It's one of those mornings. So here we have the Dakir. Show me all your secrets, please. Um, looks like a good bit of detail on this. Uh, windowing looks very well, and there's some mild aztec with the slight differences in the core paint off it. I'm not seeing any blue indications for warp nacelle, uh, which is kind of annoying me. This is in flight mode, so they should be radiant blue, even if they were painted and I'm not expecting plastic. So that looks a bit monotone, to be honest with you. Uh, ventral section, we have again, very good windowing. No, they're not molded in, so they're just painted on, which looks pretty neat, neat and tidy. Some good overall sculpting on here. We have some kind of grating, gridding along here. Back down into the yeah, a bit lackluster impulse engine. They're painted on red on top of this base coach. You can barely see that. That should be plastic, to be honest with you. And they're big enough. And that's very featureless there at the moment. Um, it's pretty straight on. Let's have a look at the support craft. It looks okay. You can barely see it in there. It looks a bit chunky on the inside. But this is quite small, though. I wasn't expecting craziness on there. And that doesn't look like, it looks like a manufacturing mold there rather than a ship feature. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. There's certain things you're kind of going, uh, you know, should be blue. That should be plastic, no doubt, because that's hard to differentiate on that body paint there. 
but the windows are nice and vibrant and the overall sculpt on it is very nice as well i've got a bit of glue piping through here the seam is kind of separated a bit what's it like on the far side yeah much better much better we have oh i got scrapes on mine look at that it's like gouges what the hell is that about that's not cool that's not cool i don't like that now i might have to get in contact with them that's a really weird looking mark isn't it it's not glue they're scrapes or is it glue let me just check no they're gouges don't know how the freaking hell that happened big gouges what do you think guys is that a case for customer support i'm not very happy with that now to be honest with you the fact that there's globby glue on this side and you flip it over to this side and there's gouges over here yeah i'm not very happy with that one i might get on to them about that um but from a distance it's a nice looking ship uh, i must admit and i think they captured the essence of the ship very well profile is very nice on it I do love it when this ring is collapsed in on itself. Um, you could probably loosen that and swing it around yourself, maybe if you want to get another one. But overall, yeah, I think you'd be happy with it. There's a couple of just, it's like, it's like the Steam Runner, uh, the last issue, you know, really nice model, shame about the deflector. Again, really nice model. I think personally, shame about the warp ring, shame about the impulse. And obviously I have some manufacturing or transit issues here. I don't know how. Quality control. Like that didn't happen in transit. That happened when it was made and when it was packaged. That shouldn't have gone out, in my opinion. Um, there's no markings on the... Um, when you look at this, that would have sat in there. Something like that. So how would that have gotten scraped? You know, it was put in like that and that. The more I think about it, the more that annoys me, to be honest with you. Um, but don't let it put you guys off. It's, it's a good model. Um, if you see them in shops, maybe have a look at the models first before you pick them up. And uh, if you're subscribers, hopefully the models that you get and eventually get are up to scratch as well. Pardon the pun. But overall, I think it's a good model. Um, but just could do better. Could do better, in my opinion. And I'm not overly wowed by the support ship in there, the scout ship. It's nice, but it's, again, lacking a lot of uh, overall detail. We have one window in there. And just this monotone paint just doesn't lend itself to seeing, okay, that's a separate component there. What's this ring do? Okay, that's the warp ring, you know, but it doesn't look like it. It just looks like a monotone ring there. But anyway, let's have a look at her on her stand and put her up against the ship in the line just to show you a sense of scale. So here she is on her stand. And just like the previous Vulcan ship that we have, it's just mounting into the ring. So it just sits nice and splendid above the base. And uh, as you can see, it really just encompasses that base as well, a little bit over the front, but nice and stable. Um, my base just comes out a little bit. So a bit of, you know, blue tack in there wouldn't be too bad. Um, I suppose you could, Mount it anyway, really, couldn't you? Would you prefer to mount it that way? I can't remember what the magazine said. Could be mounted that way as well. I prefer this way, though. And you can mount it at a different angle as well, as you can see. But, yeah, she's nice. She's nice. So let's compare it to a ship on the line. Um, maybe you know what ship I'm going to pick out here. But uh, let's cut the suspense, shall we? So here we have the family of Vulcan uh, that we have in the collection so far. You can definitely see the familiarity in design, um, the Vulcan techniques, the Vulcan design philosophies, their color palette. Um, it's pretty much universal between these two ships. Slight difference in design, but you know that they're connected. So let's get a little bit closer here just to kind of compare and contrast. So here we have the Sir class. So you can see very similar sculpting, uh, paint applications upon the Dakir. The Dakir is slightly shinier, um, but again, all the same 
features are present in both there as well. But, you know, for all the Vulcan fans out there or for all, you know, Enterprise fans, I think you're going to be very happy with this ship, you know, as long as it comes as advertised without any particular issues. But that's another story. But, um, yeah, that concludes my issue review of issue 55, the Vulcan Decure class or Decure type uh, ship, battle cruiser, that is. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for entering the competition to win the Nausicaan Raider uh, unopened magazine and model in the previous review. Check out that review to enter the competition and the winner will be announced at the end of the month. And uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And say hi on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Otherwise, I've been Irish Trekkie and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy and goodbye. <music>